Okay, in this video I'm going to show you how to add products to your Joomla 2.5 website within VirtualMart 2.0. In the back end administration section, click on components and then VirtualMart. Then go over to your products. From here you can see product. Uh, I like to look at all my products. Oops, sorry about that. I have a phone call. Okay, so there's some sample products that have already been installed here. So we can uh, just start by modifying one of those. So let's say uh, uh, the SKU, if you have a number, you can put it here. Um, sometimes I just enter in the product name. So if it was uh, fish tank, fish tank one or whatever, and then the product name might be the same, fish tank one, and the alias, it could be the same too. Um, so if we just delete that, it'll automatically create an alias based on this product name. I'll just save it just so you can see what happens. So once I click save, you see the alias was automatically collected, uh, created. So just uh, delete whatever's in the sample data there. So now with the pricing, we're going to change it. By default, this template had a euro. We're going to change it to... Uh, um, US dollars okay so that'll uh, adjust itself as well let's say the fish tank is a hundred dollars um, once we update it everything's gonna say a hundred dollars because oh no base price so we say I don't know if that, oh that's in euro we need to change the um, somewhere else we'll change this to a US dollar uh, let's not worry about that for now though let's um, manufacture if you're keeping track of that you can set those up and in, in the back end here and, and do that but I, I generally for most sites they don't need that um, product categories we haven't created those yet so let's let's stop here and um, let's just save and close this and then we can go to product categories so let's say we wanted to um, let's change this to something more appropriate for a fish tank site we're gonna call it um, let's call let's create one fish tanks and you don't really have to do, um, if you're modifying an old one, just make sure you delete the old alias so you'll have one that's more appropriate in there. It'll, it'll just make one of the, so you want to create a new one. Let's, uh, let's say uh, we have filters, filters, and then we're just going to save that. You don't really need to do much to that. If you're... You could add images to your product categories if you're going to have your categories displayed um, in like a if you want a category splash page on your front end, you could add images and even descriptions there. But let's say uh, we have a small site with only nine nine or ten products, we're gonna the front page is going to be a splash page of like this where we just put all the products on there because that's all of our products. Currency is not formatted. This is maybe old. Let me refresh that. Yeah. Okay, so I fixed that problem. Uh, the okay, so we have some categories in there. We're gonna leave off the image and description for those categories for now, and we're gonna go to back to the products. So let's go back to the fish tank that we were working on. So I'll just say I wanted two different categories. I could put two or three categories. I could deselect the category if I wanted to. Um, so that that product will show up in both of those categories the shopper groups if you have um you know people logging into your website and some people are wholesale or uh, just regular customers or anonymous customers you could um uh, select a specific uh, shopper group that that only has access to that product so when they log in they'll see that product um this cart does a lot and I don't think I'm going to cover every every little detail that you can do with this cart it's it's highly customizable so I'm just gonna go over to basics uh, when you're when you create a product you want to basically these three things here your product categories your price your product description I'm just gonna leave this here but you can enter in your own description here you just uh, it's in you just type it in whatever you want it's very easy you can add a picture. Generally, I use this when I want to add a. You don't really need to add a product uh, picture to this part, unless it's like a, 
you know, 100% satisfaction guarantee or something that you want inside of the description area because there's already a product images tab over here where we can add product images. So the uh, product status, I don't like this. Uh, this is like availability. It's within 24 hours or, you know, within two to three days. I don't like that. Um, generally, most products are ready to go and you, you don't need to tell people how long it's going to take until it's ready. So um, I'll generally just leave that blank and I'll get rid of that too. Um, and the stock, it's not going to matter. You can leave it there if there's already something there, but you can just leave it zero or whatever. Because um, later on in the cart, I usually configure it that the stock we're going to sell no matter what the stock is saying. But if you wanted to track your stock, you could you could enter it there and do it that way. Um, uh, but if you have like a retail shop and in an online shop, unless you're going to keep you know modifying this manually every time you sell one in your store, you, it's kind of pointless anyway. Um, unless you keep two separate groups of stock. Uh, the uh, product dimensions and and weight, this is good if you're doing shipping by weight. If you're including the shipping cost in the price because you've already calculated it, then you won't need to enter it here. But if you wanted to, you could could do that and then uh, plug in with like a UPS API that's going to calculate the total weight of your package. Um, you know, once they've added multiple items to their cart, it'll calculate the total weight and volume and, and give you a price based on that. Let's go to um, product images. So, you know, with the sample data, you can remove these. Um, obviously, this would be blank if you didn't have any images in here. Um, we want to just, uh, re let's just say we, and we're going to just click save once you've added your product. So we can see the new image has been, has been added there. We saved over the old one. Um, so just you want you want to click here and browse your local computer, um, and then click save, and the new image will show up. Under custom fields, this can get a little bit more complicated, but it's not too hard once you understand what you're doing. Um, uh, if we if we click on here, let's say. Uh, one of these sample products. Let's see this. Let me refresh this. Okay, so we were working on this fish tank here. I still need to change the zero to um you see we have these uh these options here. Blue is the color and the size. Uh, let's say I want to get rid of the CM, and I really don't need colors uh, described here, and I really don't need this informational tab change the size. I really don't need that, so I want to clean this up a little bit. Um, let's go to our custom fields first of all, and if we look at size, we see that. Uh, there's a description that's what I'm getting rid of there you don't really need to enter a default in there if, if you it'll save you some typing if you're commonly uh, or if you have if you have a default that you want them to choose but that's not necessary and we don't really need the boot the, the tooltip this is what they call a tooltip unless you really need one there I don't think it's very attractive so what I do is um I get rid of the tool chips the um, there's some other options here. Is it a list, hidden, layout position? Uh, that's not really necessary. So you have a, it's a cart variant. The size is what they call a cart variant. And I generally like the cart variant drop downs. Um, the color option, uh, we see that one. I, I don't want, um, I don't want that in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to, uh, keep the size there. So there's the size. I've just modified it the way I wanted it. Now with color, let's find the color. So we see colors here. It's calling it a string. I don't want it to, 
to be a string. I want it to be a cart variant. I'm not sure the technical difference, but I do know that uh, cart variant looks like this and string looks like this. So what I'm going to do is create a new one. Well, first let me rename this one. Because it's not going to let me save the same, same name. And then I'm just going to create a new one. So I'm going to call it um, a cart variant, the same as the sizing. I'm going to call it color. So I want it published. There's no parent. Um, cart attribute. Yes. And I don't really need the tooltip or the description or anything here. These can all be no. This one just should be yes. 